on Piers Morgan Uncensored, political scientist and author Norman Finkelstein went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Harvard Law Professor Alan Dershowitz about the war in Gaza. When asked what was the catalyst for this conflict, Finkelstein said, the fear of the Palestinian people's displacement and disposition. Let's watch. The fear of Arab displacement and dispossession was the chief motor of Arab resistance to Zionism. His second statement is, the idea of transfer, which is what the euphemism for expulsion, the idea of transfer was inbuilt and inevitable in Zionism. Alan Dershowitz had this in response. The key point may have been motivated by fear is that the Arab and Muslim uh, people desperately didn't want there to be a Jewish entity. For the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem, it was religious, that under uh, Islamic law, you can't give any land that was Muslim land over to a Jewish land. After that, they discussed the origin of terrorism in Gaza, and Dershowitz said Israel has political and moral claim to the land. Let's watch. I believe Israel has a, a political and moral claim to the land. There have always been Jews living there from the time of Jesus and Mohammed to 1948. And wisely, the British decided for a compromise plan for, for division. And that plan was accepted by the Jewish and Zionist leaders. Terrorism began way before Hamas. Terrorism was an essential part of the Palestinian leadership. The U.S., the Olympic uh, uh, massacres that occurred way before Hamas, uh, the, the, the terrorism on airplanes, the blowing up of airplanes, the hijacking of airplanes. The problem is that the world rewarded terrorism, and it's rewarding them again. Now, the back and forth continued on to the reasons that led to the current situation. The main cause of the disaster in Gaza is Israel's illegal blockade of that parcel of land, full stop. That's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's false. Norm Finkelstein said, quote, name me one international body that says the blockade of Gaza is legal, challenging Dershowitz to respond. Let's see what he said. Every humanitarian and political body in the world has declared that the blockade of Gaza constitutes collective punishment and therefore is a violation, a breach of international law a war crime under international law. So this was a heated debate. I recommend people watch it in full. <laughs> um, it's only about, I think, 20, 25 minutes long. And I know it's difficult to get the grasp of it in some of the clips uh, chopped up as we've done so there. Um, yeah. But I think a tee off between these two is always really useful because Norm Norman Finkelstein is frankly the pre preeminent scholar on Gaza. He literally wrote the book on Gaza and very few people can really uh, match him when it comes to a mastery of the facts and the history of the region. What did you think? Yeah, I actually credit, I would say credit and kudos to uh, Pierce Morgan, and this is not the first time I'm saying this. He yeah. is uh, he is supervising some really uh, valuable public debates lately between people who staunchly and strongly disagree. Um, I think similar, frankly, to what we try to do on this show a lot of the time. Um, I know from... <laughs> from what goes into making our show, how difficult it is to, um, to as, a, as a policy, trying to be providing genuine disagreement, often spicy disagreement, and why virtually every other show under the sun eventually leans away from doing that because it can be uncomfortable and difficult. And Piers Morgan, to his credit, is, is really delivering on this topic and many others some intense disagreements. And I think he's a pretty good and fair moderator uh, most of the time in these discussions. Now, he has clearly someone of his own opinions, and he shares them on social media and when he's interviewed in other ways. So I like I liked the format and the setup, and kudos to both Dershowitz and, um, and Finkelstein, um, who are, I think, <laughs> this is fair, right? Both people who um, don't like to be cut off. <laughs> so we've uh, we've interviewed Dershowitz on the show. I know you've had Finkelstein on your show. Both um, like and, and look and these are that's not a criticism. This is a complicated issue. Obviously, it's not a, it's not one that profits from think, sound voice. There's a lot to say. Uh, well, so I think Norm Finkelstein would push back against that. I think he would other. say it's not a complicated issue, but that there's well. been a certain kind of um, manufacturing of uh, complicatedness to prevent people from kind of making judgments based on what they 
see and are hearing about and what they experience. I mean, I, I but that's neither here nor there. That, um, I want to make sure we really <laughs> characterize or I at least unpack one of the most fiery uh, moments from the uh, exchange, which I don't think was captured uh, in our clip sequence there, uh, where it seemed like uh, Nor um, Dershowitz was sort of um, setting up the premise that um, Jewish people have a claim to the land because of having um, lit, you know, had relationship with the land for 2,000 years, um, a historical, a, bib uh, a biblical, rabbinical relationship, whatever you want to call it, uh, and that don't, and in a different part of the conversation saying, don't, isn't there a statute of limitations on um, uh, Palestinians saying that they have claims to this land after the Nakba was 75 years ago? What are they still complaining about? At a certain point, don't you have to let it go? And Norm Finkelstein replies by saying, I think you're right. There is a statute of limitations on the land. But why do you think it should be set at 75 years for Palestinians and not 2,000 years for Jewish people? And so that was one of the most viral uh, parts that went, uh, viral uh, moments that really exploited out of that debate. Again, I recommend people listen to it in full. And in case you want some more of the background uh, of the relationship between Norm Finkelstein and Alan Dershowitz, remember there was this incredible moment um, on Democracy Now! years and years ago, um, I think close to 15 or 10 or 15 years ago now, uh, where Norm Finkelstein basically challenged him on his scholarship in one of his works. Uh, Alan Dershowitz said, if you can find one lie or one inaccuracy in this, then I'll give you, I think, $10,000. They went on Democracy Now! Norm Finkelstein was very prepared. He did demonstrate some inaccuracies. And Norm Finkelstein argues, this is his allegation, that uh, uh, as a consequence, uh, Alan Dershowitz set out to ruin his career and to prevent him from getting tenure at any universities and all of these sorts of things. And so I recently had uh, Norm Finkelstein on my podcast for an over two hour conversation because it's not I think that he doesn't like to be cut off, but I think he has a lot of really important things to say and I like to give him room um, to say it all. And he actually provided some brand new color that I had never heard about in the nuances of their relationship. And one time when they met up and actually had a conversation at a restaurant together some years back, kind of talking off the record, as it were, about um, what they had, how they had interacted in public and kind of what they had done to each other over the course of their career. So I strongly recommend people tune in Oof. to listen to that. Um, yes, there was a, I believe Harvard University investigated um, Dershowitz after the accusations that um, Finkelstein made and then cleared him of plagiarism or took, did not take action against him after that. So they've certainly had a very combative history of sparring, but they seem keen to continue doing it as long as people invite them onto their programs to argue about yeah. it. So. But one thing I would mention is that when I interviewed uh, Norm Finkelstein for yesterday's episode of Bad Faith Podcast, he, I congratulated him on having done so many important interviews. Obviously, he just did the Lex Friedman debate that went super viral as well. And he pointed out that very few mainstream um, channels will have him on. Uh, that basically Pierce Morgan is the only normal cable news channel that has had him on, and that all of his other debates and appearances have been on internet-based shows, uh, and that Pierce Morgan, of course, is not an American show, and that he's been completely shut out of the American discourse as the preeminent scholar on Gaza, which is pretty remarkable when you contrast that with how often Alan Dershowitz is, appears on mainstream news, and in fact has even appeared on our own show. So I'd absolutely love to have Norm Finkelstein on at uh, any time, uh, and appreciate having him on my show in the interim. That does it for us for today on Rising. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll be back with another great edition of our show tomorrow. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss any content. And for those of you who prefer to listen while you're on the go, we're now available anywhere you listen to podcasts. Take care. Bye-bye.